good evening good evening everybody so today i will be speaking on the current approach to the management of obstetric hemorrhage how often have you all seen an opera an obstetric operation theater and you'll find so much of bleeding you will find that you know you'll find all the uh, mops are full the bp readings are coming down somebody some seniors pushing blood so literally obstetric uh, hemorrhage is a bloody business quite literally and it pun intended actually and it is the world's largest cause of maternal mortality it's often sudden unanticipated and may be associated with coagulopathy see if you see the major cause of death maternal mortality in india is met is obstetric hemorrhage so about 27% of mothers die because of obstetric hemorrhage <coughs> what is obstetric hemorrhage obstetric hemorrhage is defined as a blood loss from the uterus or genital tract of more than 1 liter earlier it was 1 and 1/2 liter the present change which has come with the guidelines is you have to say that if the blood loss is more than 1 liter it accounts to be an obstetric hemorrhage or any blood loss that has the potential to produce hemodynamic instability actually if you see the the maternal physiology is prepared for this blood loss a normal vaginal delivery you will find a blood loss up to around 500 ml and for a cesarean section a maximum up to 1 liter so the maternal physiology is actually preparing itself for this blood loss the increase in blood volume serves to fulfill the increased perfusion demands of the low resistant uteroplacental unit so the blood volume increases up to 6 liters from 4 liters it goes up to 6 liters and to provide a reserve for the blood loss that occurs during the delivery also because pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state you know it tries to prevent further blood loss the tonic effect of the uterine contraction that is it forms a living ligature or a physiological suture because the uterus contracts and retracts contracts and retracts so that itself prevents blood loss and the fibrin deposition and formation of clots over the placental site and supplying vessels inhibit further bleeding in the hours and days following the surgery or following the delivery so if you see retraction is a very unique feature of the uterus nowhere in the body you will find this special feature of retraction and that it maintains its shortened length following each successive contraction right so the blood vessels are compressed kinked by this criss cross lattice network so during pregnancy what happens there will be a fall in factor 11 and factor 13 there is a fall in all the anti coagulation factors such as uh factor protein c protein s anti thrombin 3 all of them where and there will be an increase in pro coagulant factors right so it becomes a increase in hypercoagulable state so that's what happens with pregnancy so why are we bothered about obstetric hemorrhage we are bothered because our mothers are malnourished anemic they are small built and they have less blood volume and they can quickly end up with a shock so they the uterus receives 10% of the cardiac output at term so they 
quickly end up with a hypovolemic shock. They can have coagulopathy. They may need massive blood transfusion. And finally, they, the whole thing can prove fatal to them. So the obstetric hemorrhage can be divided. We can explain obstetric hemorrhage in terms when it occurs before the delivery that is antepartum or intrapartum or postpartum. So what are the, it, so if you, call, if you can call it antepartum hemorrhage, when the hemorrhage occurs after 24th week of gestation and before the delivery. So what are the most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage? Placental previa, placental abruption, bleeding from the vagina or cervical lesions, any rupture of the uterus, or if there is coagulopathy due to any cause, such as severe preeclampsia or ITP or intrauterine fetal death. Intrapartum hemorrhage could be because of placental previa, uh, then abruption, abnormal placentation anywhere, then genital tract laceration, uterine rupture, or again coagulopathy. Postpartum hemorrhage is bleeding that occurs after the delivery. Primary postpartum hemorrhage is bleeding that occurs within 24 hours of delivery. And most common cause is uterine atum or because of induction or augmentation of labor, retained products of conception like placenta accreta, increta, or percreta, or it could be coagulopathy, fetal death, uterine inversion, or amniotic fluid embolism. And secondary PPH occurs after 24 hours to about six weeks following delivery. And the most common cause is because of retained products of conception, genital tactoma, or pupural infection, or sepsis. So the clinical signs of hypovolemia, how do you determine? If there is a loss about one liter, we, I just told you that pregnancy can easily compensate. However, if the loss occurs more than one liter and if it occurs between one to one and a half liters, there will be weakness, tachycardia and sweating. The blood pressure may not actually fall. Between one and a half to two liters, there will be a small fall in blood pressure. Patient will become restless. There will be pallor and there will be oliguria. The shock is still on a moderately compensated state. If it exceeds two to three liters, that's about more than 50% of the blood volume, you will find that there will be a marked fall in blood pressure. The patient will be collapsed. There will be air hunger. There will be anuria. And this will be a severe form of shock. If you find that the intravascular volume is depleted, a rapid clinical assessment is required in these patients. Therefore, the patient's clinical condition, because the clinical conditions can deteriorate, leading to the development of hemorrhage and shock rapidly. So tachycardia represents the beginning of decompensation. Remember, and hypotension represents the beginning of shock. So what are the causes? The four T's, they are tone, tissue, trauma, and thrombin. What are the causes of causes related to tone? Most common cause is because of over distension of the uterus. It could be because of multiple gestation, fetal macrosomia, polyhydramnias, or fetal abnormality like severe hydrocephalus. Uterine structural abnormality such as subcenturate placenta or failure to deliver placenta or distension with blood before or after the placental delivery. Poor myometrial contraction because of fatigue or a rapid forceful labor. If you increase the oxytocin very fast, then the uterine muscle will go into a fatigue and it will again lose its tone. Inhibition of contractions by drugs like halogenated anesthetic agents, nitrates, NSAIDs, magnesium sulfate, beta sympathomimetics, and nifedipine. 
and others could be because of placental implantation site in the lower uterine segment or because of infections such as chorioamnitis, endomyometritis, septicemia, etc., or hypoxia due to hypoperfusion, cuvillier uterus in abruptio placenta, hypothermia due to massive resuscitation, or prolonged uterine exteriorization.